Uh, but we're going to move on, fellas, to uh, the meat and potato section of our our episode tonight. This is um, a little game that I'm calling Who's the Guy? Uh, so it's actually, Stoner, it's inspired by one of your tweets. And uh, what I was I your, yeah, we were talking. Uh, yeah, we uh, people should not be reading that tweet. They should definitely not be. They should definitely not be remembering them. Well, yeah, Uh, this is the only one that I've ever read of yours. I scroll past every (laughs) other one, so you're safe there. Uh, But uh, you shared shared a tweet a while back about uh, about calling these committee backfields a tandem backfield, and I think I think that was really fitting to me, just because of the way that we're seeing backfields evolve, and the word committee just doesn't properly necessarily describe it to me. So, uh, real quick before we get into it, why don't you talk about what you're meaning behind uh, or the reasoning why you wanted that? Yeah, I, I, I'm starting to hate the term committee because it, it sounds like a group of people that you're <laughs> you're looking to find you're looking to find someone to stand out and take over the job. You know, like closer by committee in baseball is I haven't decided who is going to close these games, but I'm hoping somebody steps up and does it. So Mm. there is a there is a a running back by committee group in the NFL, I'm sure. But I I, I know tandem is generally considered two people, but I like tandem (laughs) backfield because because smart guy, this stoner, you know, well, there's sometimes there's some backfields like the Niners right now have three players that you consider so. I mean, I'm using the term tandem a little bit loosely, which everybody does in fantasy. They always make up their own terms, like, I don't know, positive regression or whatever. <laughs> oh, let's, stop, not, let's not go there. Let's I don't want to go there. That that. Episode. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't want to. We ain't got time lesson. for that. We ain't got time I for think, that. <laughs> I think a tandem backfield is, I mean, these guys were specifically selected to play a role. So mm-hmm. rather than calling a committee, seems like a bunch of Jags, right? Or just, mm-hmm. just a bunch of guys. I think a, a tandem backfield is a legitimate set of, of people that have a, a designated role. And a tandem backfield is, is a worthwhile investment in fantasy, whereas that committee definitely might not be. Yeah, it's a little scarier to own those quote unquote committees as opposed to the tandems. And I think of a place like Chicago, like I may have some feelings either which way on those guys, but that is a tandem backfield because both of those guys are there to play a specific role and work in tandem of each other. So I really liked that you you pulled that out. Another another little piece there, just kind of a minor thing is in writing, I totally enjoy using as a tandem more than I like to have to abbreviate to RBBC. I just think it looks cleaner in the writing, in the writing process. Um, so that was another reason was aesthetics of the word itself myself. So, uh, well, maybe that's why it stuck that, with me. Stoner. Here to help, I like that here to help change the game all over. Here. Yeah, no doubt. You, know, you changed Stoner my writing some, forever. Stoner gave some long answer, but really it was just high on the couch and tweeted that shit. <laughs> that's literally, Ninety percent of my tweets. The other, uh, I'm sitting on a toilet. <laughs> I, dude, living living in British Columbia, I was probably sitting on my couch in the same space as Stoner was. So that's why it connected with me. So uh, you vibe on that level, you're definitely doing something. That yeah, doing. man. All right, so let's so, hit up these. Let's let's hear about totally, man. So totally, yeah. There's a uh, uh, there's a few that I've selected here, so we're just going to go through them because these are some of the guys that every year crop up towards the end of the season and can be league winners. So uh, luckily, I have a couple of stud analysts along with me to let the listeners know who's the guy. So we're going to start with, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I got to grab a pen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on. I need You've got a pen straight. right in your hand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start with uh, with a tandem, and this may be more of a tandem you alluded to, Stoner, uh, that is near and dear to you guys, and that would be in San Francisco, because from what I hear, you're not supposed to call them San Fran. Um, no. In San Francisco, we're going to talk about uh, Raheem Mostert and Tevin Coleman. Um, so Raheem Mostert, uh, ADP of running back 26 right now, had the huge hype train asked for a trade, but then he got what he was looking for with a little more cash money. Um, and, and, you know, people are loving Raheem Mostert as one of those, um, you know, dependable running back two types. And then you've got Tevin Coleman, who I personally think is probably getting pooped on a little bit too much at running back 42 ADP. Um, his, I, I kind of feel like he hasn't been able to get into a rhythm in any of these offenses, aside from that one year with Shani in Atlanta. Garbage, 
<laughs> well, yeah, and he gets hurt, but he has shown some efficiency <laughs> in the past. <laughs> wow. I guess we know where I'm leading. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So why don't we uh, save that uh, that mystery <laughs> box answer from you, Stoner, and we'll go to Jax first. Oh, uh, Jax, sure. If you're, uh, right ahead. I'm always ready. <laughs> if you're looking at Moster and Coleman, who's the guy for you to own? Like, are you are you willing to pay up for Raheem the Dream or what? Jarek McKinnon. Nice. <laughs> Yes, I thought that was going to come. I knew somebody was tossing it out there. <laughs> oh, that felt so good. Already? Right that here. felt so good. Bring I got to be honest. Wow. <laughs> it's like a release. What to say it out loud. It's been two and a half years or some crazy thing since I've been able to utter this guy's name. And, you know, yeah, I was a little bit into him when he signed in in, uh, in, mm. in San Francisco for, for reasons illustrated by Raheem effing Mostert. Uh, yep. a, a guy who was a nobody, you know, was he cut from eight teams in the last six years or something? I mean, he has just been the, you know, the, the, the bong at the party, man. He's just been passed around. And, um, you know, so, so at the end of the day, I'm afraid to invest in Moster at his cost, right? Mm. He might actually lead that backfield. It's very possible. He looked really good, obviously. He was very efficient. You know, him and Aaron Jones are basically the two most efficient running backs in the NFL last year. So, you know, you can't take that away from him, and I'm not. But he's also very expensive, and I'm not sure. And just like the tandem backfield is something that we're just not sure in some of these cases. I think some of, you know, we just don't know. Um, For the most part, we kind of know on a lot of backfields what's going to happen. So for me, it's kind of like the old Patriots rule, take the cheapest one. Mm-hmm. Um, Jarek's sitting there. They could – here's the thing. All right, I'll give you my Jarek McKinnon take in two seconds. Raheem Mostert asked for a trade, right? He said, mm-hmm. if you don't pay me, trade me. And they said, all right, well, the door is over there, young man. You can just walk the fuck out and see you later. We're good. We don't need you. Right? They told him to sit down and be quiet, and he was like, oh, shit. And that's Mm -hmm. so they clearly aren't like worried if he is somewhere else. It's fine. Jarek McKinnon, they could have easily let go. No, no, no problem. Mm -hmm. And they they decided to keep him through the through the part of this contract where there's basically no no cap penalty to get rid of him. So they're paying him pretty good money to be there. Oh, yeah. um, Follow the money. So I think they're excited to use their new toy. I think if he now can he stay healthy? Is he still good? There's a lot of questions on him, too. Let's face it. I am not sitting here saying it's Jarek McKinnon for sure. I'm saying it's maybe Jarek McKinnon is all I'm yeah. saying. And it maybe it's most it, maybe it's Coleman. Maybe it's all three, which it probably is. The real answer is that the San Francisco also had the least amount of games with a with a with a with a running back over 70 percent share. So they were just basically always in the 50, 60 percent share uh, of running back touches. I think that continues this year. Ride the hot hand, the healthy guy. Uh, this guy gets banged up. He's seeing two or three carries next week, and you're getting 12. So I think that's what we're going to see. And for me, I might as well take the cheap one, and that's McKinnon. Mm-hmm. All right, Stoner, I think there's a little bit of steam coming in out of your ears. you want to uh, tell us your feelings no, on that I mean, tandem backfield? Not wrong. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, most starts, most are gonna, Raheem's going to be the guy who I think gets the majority of the touches in the backfield. Kevin Coleman can't stay healthy. The offense looked completely different when Raheem played last year. And, yeah, I know he put up a little stink, but we all know that was just for show. Um, But I do agree with McKinnon having a role. I don't think it starts early. I think at some point, Kevin, at some point, one of those two running backs is going to get hurt. And that's going to lead to McKinnon getting a larger piece of the pie mm-hmm. unless for some reason Jeff Wilson fucking snags it, but I don't see that. And then if McKinnick goes down, you know, they've got another rookie with some speed that can catch the ball and fucking Jeff Michael. So they're going to be okay, dude. They, they just Shanahan pumps in players in that mm-hmm. backfield. Mm-hmm. I think. I'm, I'm just, this just in, uh, just a quick question here, stoner. Uh, looks like here, there's a lot of numbers here. A lot of them are the same number, but um, it looks like Mostert was in the league since 2015. Uh, last year, he had 137 carries. Do you know how many he, touches or carries he had that the most in his career before then? It was less than that combined, probably. Yeah, yeah. 
I yeah. see a lot of zeros is what I was trying yeah. to find a positive integer. I, I got that one, Jax. I got that one before, <laughs> but I, before I, last I, season. Okay. Hold on. Uh, listen, Raheem, listen. Mostert, Raheem Mostert had 41 career touches before last season. I mean, so, to hang, look, all I'm saying is to hang your I, hat on that guy ever is I, not doing it correctly. I didn't finish. Fantasy people do not do it. He may be awesome. It's possible. I said that he was going to lead the backfield. Mm-hmm. I am not buying him at his price right now as a running back, too. Mm-hmm. But if he's lingering around and I snag him as, as a running back three, I, I'm much more yeah. content with that. I'm with you. And, and yeah. at best buy, as Best Buy, he's, he's a, a great snag. Look, if everybody listens to the advice and lets him slide, then I'll be happy to, you know, be his his landing parachute. But that's it. Man. People stop drafting Raheem because he's too rich right now. Let him slide a little bit, so I can get him as my RB three. Thanks. Mm-hmm. I'm not drafting him as my RB two. I'm not. For sure. I'm not confident in that at all. I think you'll sense a theme from me. Like I will, whenever there's uncertainty, I want to get value because for me, it's also, I can have Tevin Coleman and DJ Chark, or I can have, you know, Raheem Mostert and whatever, you know, bad wide receiver. I I still got a 50, 50 chance of having the right guy, but I have a better, right. uh, Jamison Crowder, right. But I have a better (laughs) chance of having the, the, the good player with the, with the 50, 50, I got the coin flip either way. Just give mm-hmm. me the cheaper side of the flip, you know, totally. and that's how you win in fantasy football is consistently taking the, the value. That's it. Raheem and CD Lamb, or do you want DJ Chark and Tevin Coleman? Well, I'll take CD right after Chark. <laughs> I mean, if you look at my rankings, he's <laughs> off the board, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, Phil. Yeah, I I like what you guys said there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you can't deny what Raheem Mostert did last year. I got some efficiency numbers here from what he did. And I do think a, a bit of this is a product of that Shanahan offense because we know how he turns through running backs. And any of these guys can produce in that offense. He had, uh, you know, the 10 touchdowns was super nice. 10 total touchdowns is great. He had the fourth most yards per touch at 6.3. And his explosive play percentage was 17%, which was the most of any running back with 150 touchdowns. Um, and so that's uh, plays or running plays of over 10 yards. And the funny thing about that is that kind of alludes to the Shanahan offense is that the season before that, Matt Breida was number one in the league with the exact same 17% explosive run play. So um, just like we'll you, Jack, it's too. really, it's, uh, yeah, it's that really sounds hard like to a leader to in the next backfield. Oh, uh, actually, I think I might, have to sw- I might have to switch our order up because I messed up on that. But I think, Jax, you led that in so well. So I think, yeah, for me, I'd still, I think there is going to be a third and I do actually like Jeff Wilson as a super late flyer at the end of my bench because I don't know Jeff Wilson showed in a super limited sample size that he can get it done in this offense too and that's just another another tip in uh, a feather in Shanny's cap let's say so I think there's going to be a little bit to shake out and I'm with Jax if I'm going with any of them I'm going to get Tevin Coleman and probably scoop up Jet McKinnon a little bit later and just kind of hope for the best because they're could you imagine if they invested in a dude like a Kareem Hunt in that offense That'd be stinky, man. It'd be tough too because I don't think that Shanny's I'm a, I'm a ever rouser. gonna. I'm I don't either. think he's ever gonna give somebody the full workload, right? But like he's got a type too, and and Hunt's not really that. I mean, you mm-hmm. know, he's not a he's not the opposite of that. But really, he You're wants right. those those slashers. I mean, look at look at Mostert. What does he do? He's not really shifty. He's just really quick. And yeah. and look that outside stretch zone. They get him to the edge and they hey it goes you know fi- put the foot in the ground and go right exactly. So you know and Jet McKinnon was that guy. Um, Mostert was that guy. Tevin Coleman is is a slasher. Exactly. So I think they're looking for a slasher. One guy who is a slasher that you didn't mention. You mes- mentioned Wilson is J Michael Hasty. Yeah. You know and I think that kid actually has a little bit of Matt I Breida did say to him. J Michael. You, you did. Yeah. yeah I mentioned. Mean, I mentioned him. Yeah. Look, you know, and, and and here's the thing is like that's a guy to keep your eye on. Like if we're talking regular fantasy football, just, you know, what, uh, 16, you know, uh, rounds, like, you know, yeah. none of these guys, McKinnon, Wilson and Hasty are, are not drafted. So sure. you're you, I mean, you're just crazy. You, so you're really just monitoring waiver now, deeper leagues, dynasty leagues and, and other leagues. You're looking at those guys. Those are guys that I think uh, if they're cheap, you definitely want to pick them up because they do have the opportunity to be they have a shot 
at being mm-hmm. Raheem Mostert this year. There's just no doubt. Totally. I mean, totally. Would you say without equivocation that Raheem Mostert is a better football player than J. Michael Hasty? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it super confidently. How? But, right. Like he's shown. Beyond, he's shown us in but, production, but not necessarily. Like who knows? Who right? knows? Talent level aside, you also have a guy who hasn't played football in two years in McKinnon. Yeah. And a guy in Evan Coleman that is consistently getting hurt and missing time. So yeah. all of a sudden, Hasty could become a backup by the right. eighth, by, by midway through the season. Mm-hmm. And Very possible. That backup role in San Francisco is a flex play some weeks. I yeah, I mean, sure. let's put it this way Hasty is an injury away from an injury away from an injury away to being an injury away. And that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Totally. That's I'm a lot of get hurt on my team. So let's not. <laughs> No. Uh, go ahead, Trev. I'm sorry. <laughs> of people going down in front of him is fucking very possible with those sure. two guys. Oh, they're actually – Stoner, hold on. Wait, I'm getting a little something. There is actually an update, breaking news out of San Francisco. There has been an injury. Uh, Jordan Reed just <laughs> fell down the stairs and has a 10th concussion. So just a quick <laughs> update there. Not joke about concussions. Let's say he pulled a hamstring. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Fair. Fair. I actually yeah. feel bad for him. I, I'm pulling for that dude. He was such a fun player, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know that he should ever play again. Um, I'd love to see him on TV or whatever. God bless him because he needs, you know. I'm very worried about that uh, head situation, yeah, head trauma. Mm-hmm. If he is, is if he is healthy and has, you know, a role, a short yardage third down role. He could be a great piece for that team if he stays whole. Mm-hmm. I just don't All see right. it happen. No, it's I not happening. I see him before it even if I can get down to him making contact with anyone. Yeah, I'm not there with Jordan Reed yet either. So, no. uh, boys, I'm going to fly right off of Jax's uh, wicked segue there into Matt Breida and Jordan Howard in Miami. So, Howard, um, he's drafted as a running back 39 right now. Uh, he's been a consistent yardage compiler, uh, not a pass catcher. He definitely does have bricks for hands. And then you got Matt Breida, who is, uh, to me, he's a big play machine. There's definitely some untapped upside, and he's he's got the durability and consistency issues that go along with Matt Breida. So, uh, Stoner, where are you sitting? We've got Howard as running back 39, and Matt Breida is being drafted as running back 33, or 43. Sorry. Uh, so who, who's the guy for you in that tandem backfield? Uh, Jordan Howard is the guy for me in that backfield. I've been I've been touting his praises pretty much all off season, and I think people were sleeping on him early and started jumping on him recently. But um, I, I think Howard is a consistent player. He got hurt last year, but if you look at his numbers, he's he's going to score six touchdowns if he plays all season. He's going to get you a solid number of yards. So if you're getting him as running back thirty nine. <laughs> He's a potential, you know, RB three four for sure. Like that's a that's a fantastic, fantastic fourth running back to have on your team, in my opinion. A guy that you know is going to have a role in that offense. And let's be honest, even in a dynasty league, he's a great get. He's only twenty five. Mm-hmm. He still has a lot, a lot, and a lot of gas left in the tank. So I, I do like Breda. I'm not against him. Like you said, he is a big play machine, but. I'm going to go with the consistency and solidify my running back room by taking Jordan Howard and not risking it with Matt Breda. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I think it, it's going to be an interesting offense to see unfold this year. There's a lot of transition in Miami. Um, we don't know when two is going to start. They actually have competent running backs this year, which is kind of nice to look at. Um, Jack's James Daly loves to guys. run that play action stuff. And Jordan totally, Howard man. is the perfect dude for that offense. <laughs> he's he's so had he's some decent offenses be. for sure. Yeah. Jax, who's the guy? So what's the number one rule in fantasy football? Take draft value. draft running backs. That's a good one. But draft running backs on good teams. Mm-hmm. So the answer to this question is a trick question because it's absolutely neither. You need <laughs> to not. Be, you need to not be drafting either one of these guys because that wasn't an option. Jack. It's neither one. It's neither one. And really, you let them fall, and you let them fall, and you let them fall, and you let them fall. And if you have all sorts of other things there, and the rest of your league has kind of punted these guys too. You still take the cheapest one. 
You just take the cheapest one, the latest possible. You do not ever draft up for a bad, uh, a, a marginal running back. I'm not going to call them both bad. I actually like Breida better than Howard, but not enough to to, to plant my flag here in terms of mm-hmm. who's going to outproduce who. If I were running that team, I would have Breida playing more downs than Howard. I would have Howard getting a lot of empty carries. You know, the ones where they have to pound it up the middle just to, you know, do that. I mean, that's it. But, you know, if I'm asking someone to get to the edge, if I'm asking someone to catch a pass, if I'm asking someone to get a valuable uh, touch in in the NFL, it's Breida, not Howard. So I'm going to take Breida, especially because he's cheaper. But it's going to have to be late, and it's going to have to be later than his ADP. I'm going to have to get a value on him because I don't believe in this team. I don't think they're going to win games. I think they're going to be a train wreck. They just lost two receivers. They didn't have two receivers. So now they only have (laughs) one receiver and Preston Williams, who's dope, coming off an ACL and pushed off a bridge, Mike Gusecki. I mean, I am out. The offensive line is terrible. The defense isn't going to be good. The coaching is outstanding, and they're I mean, building it, for the future. But this is going to be a dump truck team, and I want no part of the. Is it possible? Is it possible that we see both of them getting a lot of time on the field together? Seeing as, like you just said, they don't have receivers, and Brady can catch the ball. Maybe he's maybe, he's maybe they will play together. And, maybe they will play together. You know, Jordan Howard could play linebacker, and Brita could play corner. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jordan Howard would be the guard, right? <laughs> I mean, it's possible. Oh man, yeah, no, that's that's going to be interesting. Like that one's a tricky one, Stoner, because you have to assume rational what coaching that on that their one. Right? ADP mm. if if, uh, if they're playing both sides of the ball, like, that's got to make a little more value. Paul Horning or something. Save, save it for the yeah. IDP podcast, Fantasy Stoner. Come on, <laughs> save it for the are, IDP. Hold on, podcast. are we getting points for tackles? Are we getting points for tackles? Because I'll take Jordan Howard as an RB three then. <laughs> yeah, he'll be uh, he'll be tackling guys on Ryan Fitzpatrick's turnovers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I think you guys kind of wrap those guys in a pretty bow there. I think, um, Jax, I totally see what you're saying about not taking running backs on bad teams, and maybe I'm a bit of a glutton for punishment. But at these prices, I wouldn't be opposed to taking a shot on both and sticking with the guy who sticks. I think it's it's ugly, and you have to be well positioned. Um, at the top of your depth chart if you're going to do something like that. But I think that's something I would probably entertain. Uh, I do lean more Breida. I, I've always loved Matt Breida. He, that first year that he came on strong, he was on one of my teams and I've just loved him ever since. Um, but I think it's going to be tricky for him because in his career, he's been a little bit snake bitten as far as touchdowns. He's averaged only three per year, uh, capping out at five in one season, which isn't like anything to write home, home to mom about. And How I many think touchdowns do you think Miami's going to score on the ground? probably five <laughs> do, do you know do you know how hey stoner do you know who ryan worst, Fitzpatrick? hey do you know who the worst team was last year in um in rushing yards wild guess the dolphin do you know who this is amazing you're gonna be really good at this game i think ryan do you know, Fitzpatrick. do you know which team had the lowest yards per carry in the nfl last year uh, Kellen Balaj. I mean, the Miami no, Dolphins. That's right. I, I think if you take Kellen Balaj out, they were still bottom two or three. <laughs> Obviously, Balaj. I mean, not... he's a contributor. But, you know, they had the fewest rushing attempts or second fewest fewest yards. They had almost a third of the yards of Baltimore. Baltimore had like mm-hmm. 3,200, 3,300. They had 1,100 total rushing yards that's across gross. their team. It's not a com- it's not a competition here, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> You're pulling out our dicks here, guys? Is this like a it's fucking not a competition. contest I mean, here? how far you run in the NFL? Look, no, man, it's just a... Look, I mean, it's I'm, just, not, I'm not... Everybody gets I'm a present. Investing, I'm not investing all my money in Jordan Howard. But if I had to choose between the two, I'm going to take Jordan Howard over Matt Breida. All I'm saying is, is if they if they rush for what uh, just over a thousand yards as a as a team, eleven hundred. Let's give them eleven hundred straight up. Uh, how much are they going to get this year? Like, what is their increase? They're so much better. I don't know. They're better, I guess. Okay, thirteen hundred. So split that up. I don't know, man. That's Six, seven hundred yards a pop, maybe, uh, with other guys and quarterbacks and whatnot. That was as a team. That wasn't running back production. That was just team rushing production. So. Uh, for me, you know, Jakeem Grant's going to have 200 yards rushing. Am I right? <laughs> most likely, most likely. And I think it's kind of your classic case of the banger who's going to get the red zone work and uh, the big play the guy Patriots who's going to get the time. Of course he's going to trash anybody in that division. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's ask, him, let's ask him about Zach Moss. 
<laughs> well, hey, Stoner, we're moving right on with that one because the next tandem backfield that we are oh, talking about. Look what I just did. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. Boom. It's like you read, read the, the fucking show sheet, show sheet or something. Never saw it. <laughs> Never saw it. Just the. Oh, oh man. Um, yeah. So <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about the Buffalo Bills backfield. I know Zach Moss. Um, to shout out an Undroppables member. Term has been all over Zach Moss. He loves him some Zach Moss. I know that for a fact. And he is stuck firm on that. And I respect that about Term is if he's got a take, he's going to stick to it. Um, and he's held firm on the Zach Moss love. And I definitely see a lot to like there. We also saw a lot to like out of Devin Singletary, though. So the Zach Moss draft pick was a little bit of a gut punch for us people who own Devin Singletary, especially in Dynasty Leagues. Um, so why don't we flip it to uh, Stoner? Why don't you give me your take since you mentioned Zach Moss? Uh, who's the guy? I'll give you the ADPs here. Zach Moss running back 47. Devin Singletary running back 21, boys. Woo! Yeah, that's I'm not taking Devin Singletary yeah. as my running back, too. Um, I, I think that Zach Moss is going to score touchdowns. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know who's going to lead the backfield. I like Singletary. I don't hate him. He's tough, but he's getting, that's way too early for me. I mean, if we're just yeah. looking at you, I'll take a chance on the rookie later as a fucking running back five. He may, he may be a flex play halfway through the year when he starts pounding in pounds. And you know, stealing all the fucking all the red zone touches from from Devin Singletary, he'll carry him in his pocket. It's the only way Singletary will score touchdowns. But I'll let <laughs> I'll let I'll let Jack I'll let Jack move. I'm sure he's got a Devin Singletary being carried in a kangaroo pouch of Zach Moss jokes somewhere. <laughs> Look, it's unfair oh. for you to joke about it. It's unfair for you to joke about it. <laughs> unfair because i have some inside information I, look, I have sources i have sources and i'm here to tell you there's some breaking news this is i'm you know this is another bit of breaking news on your podcast that zach moss <laughs> and devin singletary actually have become really close friends and every single time in these meetings they're zooming it doesn't even matter they even when they're, when they're zooming what what they do is that Zach Moss lets Devin Singletary sit up on his lap so he can see the whiteboard. And that's just their bond. They're bonding. Look, Devin Singletary showers in the sink right next to his, his locker room. Uh, you know, and, and that's been a big bonding thing. They, they're right next to one another like that. And so lots of cool things have been happening with those two guys. But listen, here's the thing. You Zach said Moss has been... Zach Moss has My been reading God. his Dr. Seuss stories before bed. <laughs> That's <It's> right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he tucks, one he fish, tucks him in the top fish. drawer of his dresser. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Well, oh, I don't God. even know how. I don't even know how this started. This <laughs> talk about that. there was a, actually there was one unfortunate thing about this joking thing was that one at the practice camp just opened. And um, one of the punters accidentally punted Devin Singletary, thinking he was just a football. But that's the only negative thing that happened. I mean, but other than that, it's been pretty good. Hey, listen, you said Devin Singletary was RB21 and yeah. that Zach Moss was RB47, which is an atrocity. It's just an atrocity. Mm -hmm. You know, I have been <clears throat> loud and proud about Zach Moss, and I'm not even in love with Zach Moss. You know, terms in love with him. I. I, I turn the corner on Zach Moss a little bit, but for me, I just that's another coin flip. You know, if I look mm -hmm. at them as prospect profiles, I like Zach Moss a little bit better than Devin Singletary. Yeah. Close. All right, a little bit better as a prospect. As a matter of fact, I have them like I think one spot ahead, Zach Moss, Singletary, and Dynasty, which probably nobody in the world does, but I do. But what what I do have is I have Singletary as RB30 and right. uh, Moss as RB34 in redraft. So I do have Singletary ahead. I just think it's a coin flip, maybe a 60-40. I want to I want to I don't want to spend up on that because it might not go the way I want it to. So I have them very close, almost back to back in the rankings, which means I never get Singletary and I always get Moss. For sure. So because of that reason, because I think that they are their their ADPs should be converging right around that 30-35 range means that I never get one and always get the other. So I've had to come out and say I love them and all these silly jokes. But the fact of the matter is I think they're very, very similar prospects. One is just king size. The other one is pocket size. That's the mm -hmm. only difference. Literally, if you look at their <laughs> – <laughs> 
right? You know, one's, right? <laughs> Family size. The other one is personal pan pizza, right? But other than that, they're the same. They're similar athleticism. You know, mm-hmm. I will say we look at college re- uh, production in the receiving game. Zach Moss was amazing. Yeah, unreal. I mean, he was. Yeah. He had a, a unbelievable target share, great yards per target. Yeah. And Devin Singletary had like 60 yards his senior year receiving. He had like six catches on 16 sure. targets. So he wasn't even efficient somehow. I mean, so he was awful with no opportunity. I mean, just mm-hmm. terrible. And look, he was very good last year. I mean, he really was. He was very efficient. It's kind of like the Ronald Jones corollary. He was actually really efficient um, in, in Tampa uh, last year receiving the ball, but I still don't trust them as receivers. I'm not sure their teams do either. I think that Zach Moss might come in and take those high high value touches that I mentioned with Brita, the sure. the, the, the goal line stuff, the the catches. You know, I think he's going to be a little bit more trust on third down to block. He's a dope blocker. I mean, he's a really – he's an outstanding football player. I, I, when I started to turn the corner, first of all, term turned me on to him, but then I heard – someone asked Lance, Lance Zerline. They said, who's going to be the better pro? They said, A.J. Dillon or Zach Moss? And he went, Zach Moss. He goes, he's made for this. He said he's Mm -hmm. made for this. And I thought, whoa, that's a guy just saying, this guy is built to play NFL football. Like, without any He gives me Jamal Lewis vibes when I watch him play. And I I don't know, Travis, you're old enough for Jamal Lewis. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that for sure. Uh, I think. I think I would see I would see Zach Moss as maybe a little bit shiftier, probably a little bit smaller than Jamal Lewis, if I recall, yeah, and yeah. maybe a little bit more quickness. But yeah, I know what you mean though. Like he's he's got some size like to him. Man. He's just yeah. built like a tank, dude, and will run through you. I just I love that in him. And you know, the hope with Devin Singletary is that by the end of the year, he's you know, tall enough to ride the roller coaster. <laughs> if they win the Super Bowl, you'd like to, for him to go on the rides I mean, at Disneyland. The poor thing. I mean, <laughs> they show up, the whole thing, I'm going to Disneyland, but I can't ride any of the rides. He has to put an addendum on yeah. That's not fair. Yeah. Man, I'm glad Devin Singletary doesn't listen I, to this actually, podcast. Because I like Devin Singletary. Favorite player, ride, you know what his favorite ride at Disneyland is, right? Is it the teacups? Oh, world. of They're course awesome. it's a small world. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, boys, that's great. Um, yeah, I, I <laughs> first off, I can't stop laughing, but I can't uh, I can't disagree with you there. I think uh, I think running back 21 is just way too high. And we know that the rushing or the red zone rushing work is going to get eaten into by Josh Allen. Josh Allen had the second most red zone carries on the team last year behind Frank Gore, who um, obviously you don't want to put a player directly in another player's role. But I think Zach Moss would probably have somewhat of a Frank Gore role. Um, And Frank Gore had over 150. Right. And Frank Gore had over 150 carries last year and some high leverage work in the red zone. And I love what you said about Zach Moss's pass catching, because the reason I came around on Zach Moss is actually uh, my co-host Tyrell. So Ty McLaughlin can be followed at TNFF Tyrell. And he's a huge Zach Moss fan, like right up there, right up there with term from the start. Um, So I definitely got to give him that. And these kind of come from some of Ty's research here is that uh, almost a quarter of Zach Moss's receptions in college, and he had 66 of them, went for 50. 15 plus yards um so that's that's, that's a lot right. that is a lot uh so he's a great pass catcher they, he's, they don't he's, play defense in the pac 12 let's let's knock it down a few that's packs. fair that's no, fair but, but i mean still, he did it he took there's advantage. humans trying to tackle him, right? yards is tremendous I mean, what, what what conference did devin singletary even play in i don't even know that's florida atlantic i mean you know uh, look D2? he was he was look back. Kareth white Go go look go look. Hey, Kareth White was more efficient in that offense than than Devin Singletary their their last year there. Now I'm not saying Kareth White is better. I'm just saying like there was opportunity to be that efficient sure. is what I'm saying, and he wasn't. And you know where Zach Moss. Hey, it's a little bit of a weaker. It's not the SEC, but I'll tell you, it's still. You know he might have been playing with a little bit of a disadvantage in Utah too. I went, mm-hmm. I went to USC. I'm allowed to talk shit about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. And the only tricky right piece on. and the thing that makes me shy away from this backfield is because, A, I wish Zach Moss was drafted into a place where um, he had 
a clearer path to the role. It looks like it is going to be split because that's what the Bills want to do. Path clearly right over. His <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right after he's done laying out his clothes in the morning. Right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's going to be an interesting thing to see because I do think Devin Singletary is going to get the targets. Surprisingly, he got 44 targets in he a did. low running back target share uh, offense last year. So I think that's going to be where he can make his bread because I think um, that big carry workload evaporated with the draft pick of Zach Moss. So I like what you guys said on that one. You guys ready to fly into our last one here? It's a, another uh, California team. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, we are going to La La Land and we're going to talk the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, so it's like another another rookie sophomore conundrum, much like the one in Buffalo, actually. Uh, I think Akers and Henderson are in an offense that's more conducive to running back production. Um, maybe pop-off production, um, because there is production in Buffalo. But you got Cam Akers, who's drafted as the running back 29 right now, uh, coming out of a bad situation at Florida State, uh, going into a bad offensive line, but a good offense and a good coach in, in Sean McVay. And then you've got the running back 45 in ADP, Daryl Henderson. Anderson. Uh, he barely got any work last year. I don't think we saw the full potential because he's got a lot of really, uh, really good college production on his resume as well. So, uh, Jax, why don't we start with you? Who's the guy in L.A. for the Rams? Oh, Stoner, you know exactly what I'm going to say, don't you? I mean, same answer. Yeah, we're going to give the same, same answer here. And so I'm going to steal some of his thunder. But this one is clear and, and not even close. Um, I was actually a pretty big Daryl Henderson fan coming out last year. I mean, I had him, what, top three? four or five in a shitty running back mm -hmm. class um, where really there was only two, but you know, so that was correct. There was only two, but, um, but it's acres, man. Yeah, acres is shaded Monty and nobody's even acknowledging it, but me. Oh, it's busy <laughs> pour one out. Yeah, I mean, I'm pouring that he's one a out. Guy. He's a guy. Yeah. He's a guy. He's a guy. I mean, he's, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but, um, but, but acres well, is just a guy. Akers, I think, is probably I'm as high on him as a prospect and a player as I could be. And the nice. only reason that I'm not even jumping, I would be hot taking his ass all over the place. But the only reason is that offensive line and the schedule. Those yeah. two things are holding me back. It is not anything else. It's the offensive line that just I don't know, man. It's it's very scary in that that um that schedule is tough. But I think Akers is elite. Um, I think. He, to me, there was four elite running backs, and I'll, you know, that that that's just what I saw. You know, that's what I believe, and those are, you know, the, the, uh, you know, that's what I'm I'm saying. But and I think Acres is flip a coin if he's as good as Swift or Dobbins or any of these guys. I think he's probably the second most talented running back in this class behind JT. So for me, I'm all in with Acres. I love it. I love him in Dynasty. I, I hope they can draft a an offensive line around him. You, you know, where they drafted Van Jefferson. The very next pick was Ezra Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, yeah. how the hell did the Rams draft a 24-year-old nice. rookie slot receiver when they've got the best, the best slot, one I mean, in the league? The best yeah. one in the league. I mean, come on. The redundancy of that pick when they absolutely were dying in the desert for, for offensive linemen, and they just let Ezra Cleveland, who went the very next pick. It's like, I mean, unbelievable. so unbelievable. Which is ironic yeah, because I mean, they just that... took a second-round running back after taking a second-round running back the year before <laughs> as well. Like, it's, it's, oh. it's wild drafting out there in, in L.A. But, uh, Stoner, go ahead. Who are you? It's not, obviously, yeah. you're taking Akers, it's, right? Yeah, I'm Team Akers. I mean, he broke Dalvin Cook's freshman fucking FSU record. I mean, granted, their offense was destroyed the last few years, and he still made some magic happen. And, you know, he's not going into the best situation in L.A., but these are also professional athletes rather than college kids. I mean, yeah, he's, they're going against professional defensive linemen, but I have to think that he's going into a better situation. Mm -hmm. He's a three-down back. He's, I think he's got good hands. I think he runs yeah. good routes. Yeah. Um, a nose for the end zone. He, I don't know. He seems like he's adaptable, too, and, and that he can – I don't know, tweak his running style. And I think that comes from the last two years being at FSU, having to fucking find a way to Frankenstein a game together and figure it all out. So, I mean, I think the struggles that he's gone through the last two years are only going to be a benefit. Um, yeah, the, I, I would hate to have to play the Niners defensive line a couple times a season, Totally, you know, hops aren't fun. And, you know, yeah, the schedule is going to be rough. He also... I, I'd be concerned about his ball, uh, his ball handling. 
he, he, he came, <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but it just came out. Uh, he oh, tends boy. to shift the ball. You're not supposed to smile when you wrong. say that. I just, uh, I mean, we're on. He's just got to cup it. He's just got to cup it. He he hesitates, smiles, and then gives me a ball handling. I mean, yeah, come on. He's, he's just got a Cooper cup. Security is <laughs> Cooper probably, cup. yeah, he had a Cooper cup the ball. <laughs> Jared Goffin. Uh, and that golf. is the title of it's this golf. episode. Okay. <laughs> you got a Cooper Cup ball. Yep. That's dumb. But yeah, Akers is uh, the answer. And you know what? Henderson could be that guy. But Hey, I had, a, I had a look for you there, Stoner. You know how we were talking about how, uh, you know, what kind of a back would be really good in San Francisco, a guy who can slash. How about Daryl Henderson in San Francisco? That would be all right. Oh, he's the enemy right now. In that know. offense, though, in that yeah. offense, man, he'd look legit. I think Shanny could make something happen <laughs> for him, too. Um, yeah, I don't think we need to go much longer on this one. It's Acres for me, too. I think they just drafted him. Obviously, something about Henderson made them a little bit sour and not thinking that he can handle the load. And I think, you know, uh, like you said, Stoner, these are NFL players. And sure, um, it's a bad O-line, but he's used to playing with a bad O-line. So if they can even be just a smidgen better than they were last year, I think there is some opportunity. We know he's probably going to end up getting that red zone work that Todd Gurley used to get. And that was the key yeah. to Todd Gurley's value. And that could be yeah. the key to Cam Akers' value. Because I agree. He's a good, he's a good pass Look, catcher, too. You can, he, you can hate golf all you want, but he's got Cooper Cup and he's got mm -hmm. Bobby Trees and he's got everyone's new favorite tight end, Tyler Higby, even though they're sleeping <laughs> on Gerald Everett. Like, you know, they have guys that golf can throw the ball to. So it's not like the teams can just stack the box on them and there's going to be eight dudes waiting to smash them. I mean, they do have offensive weapons. So I, I think he will have some game struggles. Um, but I think he's going to have some solid games. And the future, like Jack said, is super bright. This running back class, I mentioned last night too. In 2021, we're going to think, damn, this this class is special, dude, mm -hmm. with JT and, and Swift and, I mean, Clyde, of course. But yeah. I love Dobbins to be a top 12 to 15 back in 2021. Yeah. In my dynasty ball. running back 13. And then Akers. And shit, if, if Vaughn carves out a James White-like role for a few years of Tom Brady and Moss carves out this role yeah. in Buffalo, like – you know, let's not forget about Antonio Gibson and, and the later round guys that, that people mm. like too. I mean, totally. You know, this running back class is is going to be fun to see how they progress for sure. And mm. Acres, I think, has to be one of the top guys. Totally, man. I'm somebody who kind of leans a little bit running back heavy in my approach to building a roster. So uh, that's the kind of stuff I like to see. Running backs to me are the sexiest position in fantasy. So um, that's why it's been a blast to talk about these guys with you guys. So guys, we got one more Talking section. About tight end. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's uh we talk enough about your man crush on George Kittle, the stoner. <laughs> He's extremely handsome and a great player. We get it. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I love George Kittle too. I'm with you. Brady is as a player and a human. I wasn't even talking about his look. That's the <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, no. He's Canadian. He can't do anything but compliment people. That's what he's yeah, built to exactly. do. Yeah, exactly. I say nice things. That's what I do. Uh, 